We record this, so uh, three things coming down the pike. Uh, church planting next month. It's going to be at a special time, so you can go to your own church services. And if you want to come, it's optional. You can go to the Carewood Church. And it'll be uh, the church planting will be kind of like a workshop where you can learn how to plant a church and learn evangelism strategies and how to greet people at church and retention and all that. Uh, so that's coming down the pike. Another thing coming down the pike. Uh, every what you guys are doing is great, but not everybody can do what you're doing. Coming up to people. So once a month, we're gonna have a special like what you and I did at USF. Okay. We're gonna have to do that, like but like a university mall or in a large city park or okay. at some mall, and, and uh, just walk around and talk to people and and just uh, hey invite people. To, to our Bible study group on Tuesday nights or Thursday nights or okay. um, and there will be and the more you do it we'll have kind of levels where the more you do it you can kind of you'll, you'll get more acclimated you can do more and more until you can get comfortable with even doing this so okay. and uh, last thing I'm throwing I'm throwing a lot at you guys I, I told uh, Jared I ran into on Sunday evening I was studying uh, over there Ran to a college girl who's who's Islam. We talked about Islam. Uh, we we will go over how to talk to somebody who's Islam or Mormon or Jehovah Witness or Buddhist okay. uh, or atheist. Even we'll have these cards, but we will get their own books and we will highlight their own scriptures that will prove Jesus is the Christ and prove the Bible's inspired. And because they don't believe that stuff. And from there, we will transition to the Bible studies. But we will do that. that. That's something we'll do down the road. And we'll only do one of these like once a month. Down the road. So, uh, but um, these cards, if you are interested in like reading them, uh, go to Google and type Church of Christ Evangelism, the first site you get to. Click on that site and go to the Books Resource Center. Scroll all the way to the bottom of that page and you can download these cards and you can look through them. And it's cards for Jehovah Witnesses, Buddhists, Atheists, Agnostics, Islam, Mormons. Uh, so, so anyways, throwing a lot of stuff out there. Um, okay, so today is a special day, Gustav. Uh, this is exciting. I got so excited driving to, to Panera Bread. That I had a chill come up my leg. I was like, "Oh, this is this is an exciting day." So um, we're gonna do a little bit of role playing, and then we uh, we are going to uh, have one of you gentlemen practice giving this to the other gentleman. Wow! And you don't have to do it perfect. It's, it's just doing it so you can get familiar with it, practicing and getting it into your brain. It's not like. Uh, by giving a sermon, you got to do a polished job. It's just going through the motions to learn the material. Um, but first, we're going to do the fa my, one of my favorite things in the world, which is role playing. Uh, and here's a role playing sheet in just case you don't have one. And if you want to think of some role playing scenarios that are not on the sheet that might be fun to do, uh, let me know and, I, and we can do those as well. But before we start, uh, Jared led the prayer last time, so guess up can you? All right, let's thank pray. You. Father, thank you for this opportunity to learn more about spreading your gospel and obeying your will. Please help us to gain confidence and the skills necessary to teach the lost and to encourage all people to do what is right in your eyes and to obey you. Please help us to use this time together wisely and to grow spiritually as well as mentally and physically. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, can I ask you a quick question, Gustav? Yeah. Do you want any church cards to invite people to your church? Yeah. I stole them all. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, no, that's you don't go to yeah. I don't <laughs> go to um, I asked our elders if we could get some. Okay. Uh, or one of our elders. And so Adam Willingham and David Lopez are going to be working wait, on that. Where do you go again? Um, I go to North Paris. North Paris? Yeah. It's up in Lutz. 
Yeah. North Terrace, yeah. So you don't, don't, I can make your cards, I mean we can make them together or, but if you, if, if you, if you, if you got it covered, we don't have to do that. Well, I'd love to learn how to make cards. Okay, cool beans. Um, how about, uh, uh, let, let me quickly, I, uh, would you like to learn how to make cards too, or? Um, sure. Okay. How about, uh, uh, Jared and Gustav, uh, make cards. Okay. And I got a fa uh, online thing we can do together. Okay. And they will teach you how to make the cards. And they even has your uh, thing button you click and it'll print out the cards and ship them to you as well. Wow. Uh, so, so we can, uh, uh, we'll get a class going on that uh, down the pike uh, pretty soon. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so, okay, so role play, role play. Um, so, uh, let's see. What is a good role playing scenario? Well, these questions are pretty, let me see. I might be doing an airplane or something wrong. Okay, airplane? Sure. Okay, you and guest off airplane. And, and here's cards if you want to practice cards. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, who's, who's doing the... Yeah, I know. All right, hey, my name's Jared. I just uh, uh, got back from Europe. Kind of now I'm just heading straight for uh, Tampa. That's where I live. Okay, that sounds good. I live in Tampa as well. Okay. Uh, so, just out of curiosity, uh, since you live there, um, would you ever be interested in like? Uh, just doing, I'm part of a Bible study group, so I was always handing these out. If you're ever interested, if you ever want to take one. Well, maybe. I mean, I go to a Presbyterian church, and we already do a lot of studies. So, I don't know. What What makes your group special? Um, so, with us, we're uh, not specifically uh, like coming out of any church. We're just trying to, uh, you know, try and study the Bible together and try to get the best understanding of it we can. Okay, I think I'll check you guys out. That sounds like a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, very good, very good. Very good. And he asked you a, a thumper, too, and you yeah. did a good job. That's good, because right. people are, sometimes people ask, you know, and they get a good response. Okay, think of a scenario for... Uh, you giving it. Okay, um, maybe should I do how to talk to a church visitor, the last question. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's, and you see church pe people coming in all the time, they uh -huh. sit, and uh, I'm not, I'm not referring your art, but I've been to other churches, and they yeah. come in, come out, nobody says boo to them, nobody invites them to a Bible study, uh, so, uh, so that's, that's good, that's very good, yeah. So, hi, welcome. What's your name? Oh, uh, Jared. Okay. Have, do you live in the area, Jared, or...? Um, yeah, I just kind of live Okay, and do you have a church congregation yet, or are you still looking around? Um, I don't really know. I guess I'm kind of looking around. Okay, well, we'd love to have you here, but we'd also love to have you at this Bible study group if you're ever interested. We we learn about evangelism and there's different techniques around that. Have you ever done anything like that? Uh, about what? Well, evangelism basically means we learn how to teach others the Bible. Oh. Where's the... I want to learn about the Bible class. Excuse me? Where's the I want to learn about the Bible class? Well, it's at Panera Bread. It, we meet every Tuesday and Thursday at 7. I thought you said that's for like sharing it. Hmm. I don't oh. know if I want to share something I am very new to. Oh, you're very new? Well, we also have Bible classes here at our congregation, at our church, if you just want to come regularly and then maybe later down the road you can check out our group. Does that sound good? Um, sure. Excellent. Right. Very good job. Very good job. Okay. okay, now we're going to do where you talk to somebody, then you ask them their salvation story, and then after they give them, they give you their salvation story, you ask if you can share theirs. Okay, so this is a little bit more advanced. Mm -hmm. Okay, so think of some scenarios. Jerry, think of a scenario 
that you want Gustav to do uh, in, in giving you that invite. And Gustav, think of a scenario you want Jared to do in giving you. So wait, what is the invite to? Uh, to to uh, study this. Yes. yes. Okay. Because after they say, yeah, I'll, I'll share with you my salvation story. It's it's in the, this book right here, and we can go over it and sit down and 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 do that. So laundromat. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, so how, who's uh, evangelizing whom? You you're, you are evangelizing me, then Jared will evangelize me. Okay. At, at the laundromat. Okay. okay. So I'm just washing my tidies and nitties okay. and all that stuff. Hi, I'm Gustav. Hey, Gustav. My name's Joe. Great to meet you, Joe. Do you live in the area? Yes, I do. I live uh, two blocks away in a nice little suburban uh, apartment complex. Say, where do you go to church? Uh, I go to the Ark. It's, it's a church, uh, uh, it's a very small uh, Latino uh, slash English speaking church. Mm -hmm. Now tell me about your conversion experience, like how did you come to, to know God? I, I uh, when I was a kid, uh, my uh, pastor told me that uh, I had a, uh, he gave me a, a, a brochure and he says I got to say these words in the brochure. Uh, and, and if I said these words and accepted Jesus, I would be saved. Hmm. What kind of things did the brochure say? It said that I'm a sinner, that uh, I'm born in sin, and, and uh, he said if I say this, I'm a sinner, and, and accept Jesus, I'm saved, mm -hmm. I believe. Okay, do you, do you think that's compatible with what we see in the Bible? I don't know, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. And, and uh, oh, I, uh, I'm i not sure. Hmm. I'm not sure okay. if I'm saved. Well, would you ever have an interest in studying the Bible? And I can show you or tell you more about my conversion story and the experiences I've had. Yeah, I would love to learn more about salvation, hear your salvation story and what the Bible says. Yes, please. Alrighty, let's do it. Okay, wonderful. And then we'll have Jared do that. Then uh, right now we're, um, we're or, or, yeah. Okay. We're all at the laundromat today. <laughs> okay, then. Hey, how's it going? My name's Jared. Hey, Jared. My name's Joseph. Uh, so, yeah, I'm kind of new to the area, or new to the area. I just moved up to, uh, I just moved up from South Tampa. Anyway, so, pretty much just new to the area. I'm kind of moved up here just because, like, uh, I only work so many days in my office, and I do a lot of events here at, like, the church I go to. So, I think probably better to live up here. Okay. Um, but yeah, I currently just go to a uh, University Church of Christ. Uh, if you've ever heard of it? Oh, yeah. It's, it's uh, isn't it just on uh, Bruce B. Downs? Uh, yep, yeah, that's the one. Okay, cool. It's a big building. Mm -hmm. Why do you like it? Um, particularly for me, I think that preaching is just really sound, and also how I say it's very like simple like there's not a whole lot to it it's just there's really good preaching people that really understand the bible and a lot of people that are just willing to teach it excellent okay uh it, very good you're doing excellent jerry now how do you share your salvation yeah now i gotta do that um i didn't always originally go there but i if you don't mind if i can actually uh, curiosity um uh, like are, uh, are you a Christian at all? I think I am. Uh, I, uh, uh, I was baptized as a baby. Uh, they dunked my head under the water at the Catholic Church. Uh, so. Okay. Um, so, do you mind if I can share like my story about uh, Yeah, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. That'd be wonderful. So, I was about... I grew up in a, uh, a church that uh, is pretty similar to the one I go to now. What they, for me, I think it was a, we adopt, my family adopted like a, at the time, seven or eight year old, I don't know which, I think seven, seven year old girl, and she kind of came from a troubled background. That, just dealing, having to deal with her kind of revealed a lot of like, I guess just a lot of like, evil or sin in my own heart that I had to repent from. In doing so, that kind of helped me, uh, uh, led me more towards studying the Bible and, you know, seeing a need for why I, uh, for Jesus. 
And from there, I was able to, you know, uh, just repent of my sins and be baptized. Okay, cool. And yeah, you, you don't have to, like... The life what? story? You don't have to do this. You can just, you can, you can just share your salvation oh, experience. too. You can just say, share some scripture, share your salvation experience. Uh, but if you share the salvation story, it's it's more in depth. But you can do it that way too. That that that, that totally works. Wait, what was the plan? Like like oh, that, so that's how you were saying, uh, Joseph. Well, can I share with you my salvation story? And I'll say, sure. And, uh, and then you say, well, this this Bible right here. I'll, I'll let me show you from Bible House. Oh, so uh, when I say my salvation story, I mean like more generalized. Yeah. Here's where it is from the Bible. Kind of. yeah. Oh, got it. Uh, so here's here's your own personal Bible, uh, and here's some cards. Um, so Kim, uh, you and I, oh, we're at the laundry mat. Think of a way how to it uh, just. Uh, you can invite me to church or invite me to a Bible study. We, we're, we're kind of doing other things as well, but but we'll get into that later down the road. Um, so I, I'm just I'm washing my my bow ties and my my church suits and uh, you know all, all my fancy church pants and all that and <laughs> all that yep at the laundromat Kim. hey Kim my name's Joe you come here very often or? I come here every uh, uh, Monday uh, in the evening to, to wash my clothes and my church clothes and clean my socks and all that good stuff. Do you live close by here, I guess? Yes, yes, I, I do. Just uh, uh, just uh, 30 minutes from here, I'll ride my bike here with a oh, bundle of clothes on my back. I go to the church right down the road from here. Um, it's called Livingston Avenue Church of Christ. Are you affiliated with any certain church? Or no, no, I, I haven't been to church in years. You consider yourself a Christian, or? Uh, I, I think I am. I'm not sure. What makes you think you might be? Oh, I believe in Jesus. Um, did you want to ever have a, a Bible study sometime? Though? Oh yeah, well, a little. About what the Bible says. Yes. How to be I, saved? Yes, uh, I don't know much about that. I'd love to learn more. Uh, uh, thank you, Kim. I appreciate that. You, you guys are doing good. Um, big, so big, we're going to cover something really cool today, Kim. From this, it's a chain Bible. You can teach the whole plan of salvation, what Jesus did on the cross, in about 30 minutes, uh, 45 minutes. And so uh, one of these gentlemen here is going to practice teaching, teaching us. And it's going to be fabulous. It's just practice. It's not perfection. It's not a presentation. It's not a sermon. It's just him going through the the, the motion of, of going through the content. And when he goes through the content, he'll be learning, and we'll also be learning with him. And uh, there's a guy called John Rowe. He does this, and he brings about 40 people to the Lord every year uh, using this material. This is called a Star Bible, and uh, he uses this. He learned this from We Care Ministries. And this is a, that's an evangelism group who's converted thousands of people all over the United States of America through, through the Star Bible, uh, through door knocking. Uh, they were really big in the 1990s, one of the largest evangelism groups. They'd go to different churches, train those churches, and those churches would go out and convert hundreds of people. So, um, and they use the Star Bible. And um, so, uh, so you did really, really good. Uh, um, Okay, so Jesse, there he is. Uh, Jesse, I got a book for you. It's 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 the Bible. It's a good book. It has it's a small Bible. You can put it in your pants pocket. I got one right here. Yeah, it's got the five acts of worship daily reading schedule, and you can also teach a plan of salvation using that book in thirty minutes. Uh, so one of these gentlemen here is going to practice teaching it. Uh, going through the motions of, of, of going through each each page. It's a it's a key chain passage Bible, and we will go over it with him and learn together. So it's not like a polished presentation. He's just going to go through it, and we will go through it with him and learn. Um, so, and if anybody needs any more invite cards, uh, here's here's some more cards and all. 
It's used by John Rowe, he's one of the top evangelists in the United States of America. He converts about 40 people a year. He, he does more workshops every year than any evangelist I know. And he trains churches to use the approach we're going to go over tonight, today. And he, those he trains convert 40 people, 30 people, 20 people, a dozen people a year using this approach. What John Rowe does is he, he learned this method, then he goes to public places, he, uh, he talks to folks, he asks them their salvation story, they share it, then he asks if he can share their, his salvation story. If they say yes, he says, okay, cool. He takes out a Bible, he says, well, my salvation story is right in here, and he shares it with them. And, and those who hear it, those who are receptive to it, are baptized right then and there, uh, and he brings many people to the Lord. So it's fantastic. So, um, and if the if print is too small, let me know. We got larger print right here. But uh, so th this is exciting. This is really exciting. Um, and I was telling the, uh, these guys that um, long here, so I guess I'll go. Okay, you'll go. Okay, oh, cool. So I'm trying to leave at some point. So. Oh, you got to leave. Oh, I still got like at least 15 minutes. Oh, oh, well, that doesn't give you enough time to present, does it? Maybe. Okay, how about you do it till you have to leave, then Gus will take off. Alright. Right? Okay, so this is fun. Um, and then it begins with this. Yep. So, uh, you... Yeah. Alright, so, question which is saved right on the cover of your Bible is, what if the Lord were to come right now? Would you know for sure, uh, nothing, uh, not doubting anything, that you would go to heaven? So to answer that question, we want to turn to page 362. It should lead you to the book of 1 John, chapter 5. Alright, uh, on that page you'll see at the very top, we can know how to have eternal life. And we'll have a little passage here that's uh, underlined and checkmarked to uh, answer exactly or how we can do that. Um, Gustav, would you mind reading uh, that underlined passage, sure. chapter 5, verse 13? These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So, going to this passage, um, what exactly is it, or how is it that uh, the reader can know to have eternal life? Well, because of the things that I have written to you. Correct. It's you know, what is written here in God's Word, and that's going to be kind of the theme for this uh, study, is that it's through God's Word that we uh, know how to have, you know, what exactly is God's plan of salvation for us, and how to have eternal life. With that, we'll have the next question, written in uh, whatever font that is at the bottom, and what has been written? Turn to page 153. And you see how he's doing it? It's as easy as that. Just reading the notes, having them read the scripture, talking about the scripture, and then reading the underlining note, and then having him turn to the next pa passage. And Jared's doing a good job, too. Alright, so, same subject. Um, if you don't mind reading that, it should be on John chapter 8, verse 24. But before sure. that, would you read the uh, top one, or the top uh, question? Okay. Uh, is this a life and death statement? Oh. Okay, and can you read that verse? Sure. Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins. For you do, if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. So, simple question. Is this a life or death situation? Just for clarification, the man talking here is Jesus. It sounds like it. Claiming, yeah, that we might die in our, that we will die in our sins if we do not believe that uh, Jesus is who he says he is. Alright, then who exactly is Jesus? So if we can go ahead and turn to page 27. This will take you to Matthew chapter 17. So, if you don't mind reading, starting with that uh, cursive, that top question, and also the underlined passage. Whose son is he? Verse 13 of Matthew 16, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? 
So some, so they said some seek on the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Okay, so following this passage, uh, who exact, whose like, son is Jesus? God. Correct. This is how Peter says. Many of them try to guess like one of the Old Testament prophets, what some of these names are, like Elijah or Jeremiah. But uh, Jesus uh, uh, confirms here that he is the Son of God. So, the next question we will be asking, is his being the Son of God all we must believe concerning his identity? We'll turn to page 137. So, uh, I was so ahead and read that. It's the very beginning of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So from that, we turn to the next page. Alright, Jesus being the Son of God is God. Notice here, in that same underlined, or the next underlined passage, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, and the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So just from this passage. So when Jesus came to earth, did he leave his uh, Godhead in heaven? Turn to page 304. Notice that Jesus, so from the uh, uh, Gustav, would you actually uh, want to take this page? Start with the question on top. Yeah, same sure. as last time. Oh, Page three hundred and four. Okay. Notice that Jesus. So the top one is notice that Jesus is one hundred percent man and one hundred percent God. Uh, this is Colossians two verse nine. For in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay. okay. So answer that question. You know, even though Jesus is uh, in car uh, as a man on earth, he is still he is still. Uh, has the fullness of God. Okay. So we'll turn to the next page, or please turn to page 327. All right. Would you be able to read that section? Sure. Uh, sounds good. 320, 327? Uh, yes. Okay. Sorry with the you know, top question or the top of uh, sentence. Okay. Um, God the Father calls his own son God. Uh, Hebrews 1 8. But the son to the son he says, Your throne of God is forever and ever. So this is an example of God the Father referring to God the Son as you know God. So Jesus also shares in that title. So what does Jesus himself claim to be? Not what necessarily Peter claims or any of his apostles, but what does Jesus say about himself? For that, we need to turn to page 154. And uh, are you able to take that page? Uh, 154, start with the question on top and the underlined verse. So, um, thank you for that. Uh, in this verse, I am is an, is an Old Testament reference where God often went uh, speaking to people would invoke that type of name. The Hebrew pronunciation was Yahweh, but he would invoke that uh, name uh, to refer to himself. When Jesus, here he's talking to uh, like religious teachers of the area, and he uh, also invokes the same name, knowing they would pick up on the reference that Jesus is calling himself, you know, to, uh, referring to himself as God. 
say. So we must believe that Jesus is God, or we will die in our sins. From there, we'll turn to page four. All right. And there are three persons in the Godhead in the top section. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God, keep in mind that's capital S, Spirit of God, descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So in here, we do, you know, it's obvious where the Father is, that's the voice coming down. On top of that, we also have the Spirit of God, which is, you know, the, you know, the third part of the Trinity. That's why it's there in a capital S. So, from that, and Jesus, we understand that Jesus is part of the Trinity. And next, we'll turn to page 315. Alright, on this... Um, Gustav, would you be able to take this one? Yes, sir. What is Jesus called here? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. So, he's called a mediator here. Alright, there is one God and one mediator between God and, and men. That man is Christ. So what exactly is like Jesus being referred to as here? As a mediator. Uh, between who exactly? Well, between God and men. Correct. For that, uh, the next question I might want to ask is, why exactly do we need a mediator between God and man? And we'll go to page 392. Um, actually, would you be able to do that page? Sure. Okay, uh, Isaiah. What has separated us from God? Uh, Isaiah 59, uh, 2. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you. So, what exactly is it, according to this passage, that separates us from God and requires us to have a mediator? Our sin. Correct. Um, from that, we can go on to the next page. So, if our sin is separating us from God, what exactly can save us? So there we go to page 229. Um, so, yeah, if you're able to take that. What is the power of God to save us? For well, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who will come, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Okay, so, um, so what exactly is, you know, the power of God to save us in here? Or what is that according to this passage? For everyone who believes. Well, I mean, that's part of it, but what is it we're believing in? Believing in um, the gospel. Correct. For people who uh, not just believe like in God, but also his entire message, particularly the gospel. So what exactly is the gospel of Christ? Turn to page 202, uh, 267. I like you asking questions too. It's engaging. Mm -hmm. Are you able to do that page? Here, like, what exactly you know happens according to scriptures? 
Well, it says here. Correct, and that's what's being said, uh, you know, according to scriptures. So from that, let's go to page 397. So this is just going to be a uh, kind of a silly picture, but it's just a simple picture of what the gospel is enacted in its simplest form, uh, and of that same verse. So there you have the death of Jesus hanging on the cross, his burial, and then his resurrection. And that's a uh, you know, essentially what the gospel is in its very simplest form. So why did Jesus necessarily have to do these things to save us? You know, why, what is this essentially, what's in it for me, or what's this have to do with me at all? Let's go to page 291 for that. I'm sorry, let me check my phone one sec. I probably need to go. Okay, that's cool, that stuff can take over. You did a okay. great job. Well done. You are uh, yeah, I gotta go to Lakeland. And flow. What, Jared? Take over, and you can see that Jared had never taught this material in his life. And it's as easy as one, two, three. You just have people turn to the material. You have them read the material. Then it tells you where to turn again. You have them read it, and there's there's cliff notes that they could talk about. So. Okay. So uh, Jesse, would you like to take this next page? His death, we read his blood. Ephesians 1, verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Okay. So, um, this information. Okay, so this passage basically proves the point at the top. But what exactly is redemption according to this passage? Redemption? It is, uh, Saved. Yes, the forgiveness of sins it says here. Redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Alrighty. How wonderful is this forgiveness? Let's go to page 366, everyone. Alrighty. Um, Joseph, would you like to take this next page, please? Sure. Um, he can present us how, uh, Jude 24. Now to him who is able to keep us from stumbling to present us faultless before his presence in glory and exceeding joy. Uh, so I guess it says he can present us how, uh, he, Jesus can present us faultless before God. Exactly. Yep, it says before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy and also for that faultless. So. Jesus takes care of our sin problem with his death. Now why has he now why was he raised for us? That's the question we'll look at when turning it to page 268. Let's do that. Okay. Kim, would you like to do the next one? understand how that passage proves the point at the top? Excuse me. Alrighty, it says that um, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. So we die physically, but we don't have to die spiritually because of Christ. Okay, let's go to page 320 next. Joseph, would you like this one? Sure. Second uh, uh, Timothy, chapter two, verse ten. 
in a nutshell what two things does the gospel bring us okay it says right here um but has now revealed to us uh at the appearing of jesus he will abolish death and bring to life uh our, our immortality through the light of the gospel okay so it sounds like uh uh, what Jesus will do for the gospel is give us life and immortality. That's exactly right. And as a bonus, Jesus abolished death. Yeah. So, amen to that. Let's move on to page 234. Okay, um, Jesse, would you like to do these two questions in the... We were reconciled, so before, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. So, what can... What can we be through Jesus' death, according to this passage? Reconciled to God. Right. And what can we be through His or Jesus' life? We can be saved. Exactly. Okay, let's move to page 242. Just a few pages further. Okay. Ms. Kim, this is your turn. If you'd like to read the question in the verse, please. Okay, so do we have to confess Christ and believe the gospel to be saved? Yes, okay. Is this a life and death statement? Yes, it is. Alrighty, now let's look at the question whether we have to change our lifestyles. Let's go to page 256. Okay, Mr. Joseph, would you please... Yeah, and I skip, always skip this right here. It's just extra verses, you know. So. Yeah. Just read then the verse, the two verses here, please. Okay, sure. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, uh, 9 and 10. Uh, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards nor violers, nor extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so do we have to change our lifestyles? It sounds like it, yes. Yes, especially if we were some of these. Okay. Now, what if we do not change? That's the question we'll look at next. Let's go to page 114. Okay, Jesse, would you like this one, please? Are these life and death statements? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Okay, so what would the answer be to the question at the top? Um, if you don't repent, then you will perish. So you right. don't like the statements. Exactly. So, to get in on the saving gospel, what must we do? Let's turn to page 312. Okay. Uh, Ms. Kim, would you do this one, please?
Okay, Joseph, would you like to take this one, please? Sure. Yes. Uh, Galatians chapter 3, uh, verse 26 and 27. Where does one actually... When does one actually become a Christian? Uh, uh, 26 says, For all... For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you who were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Exactly. So what would your answer to the top question be? It sounds like when we're baptized into Christ, we connect with God. We become sons of God through, through our faith in, in, that, in doing that. Yes. Now, um, let's look at one last page. If you become a Christian... If one becomes a Christian, will he face persecution? Let's look at page 167. Jesse, would you like this one, please? Remember the word that I said to you. The servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. Okay, exactly. So, should we, uh, should we keep going, Mr. Joseph, or, because we're getting close to eight. Oh, we're know. almost done. Just there's two, yeah. two more pages okay. and we're done. We're okay. great, too. So, what is the worst kind of persecution? Well, let's look at page 116. Alrighty, um, let's see. Kim, would you like this one, please? Okay. So, we have to count the cost. Now let's, to count the cost, let's turn to page 356 to see f more information. Okay, Joseph, would you please take this one? Sure. Uh, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. Uh, Jesus commands commitment. For if they have escaped the corruption of the world through the knowledge of the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and they are again entangled in them, overcome, and they are later worse off than they were in the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, than to have known it and to tur have turned from the holy command delivered to them. Oh, that sounds serious. Very yes. serious. Right. So, Gustav, if I... I'm saved and I go back to living in the world, it's more serious than if I wasn't saved at all. Um, excuse me, give me a second. Yeah. That's having known it. Okay, so if you had been, if you've been saved, it's worse to then turn, yes, back into the world than if you hadn't been saved. So at I, all. I really have to make, if I'm going to be saved, i got to make sure I'm 100% committed to, to exactly. living as I should. Okay. Yes. Let's go to page 217 next. Alrighty, Jesse, would you please read this one? And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized, and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So, what is your answer to God's call? Do you want to get baptized? That is the question. We care about your souls, and we want you to get baptized as soon as possible. Yes, please. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. All and you did a good job. This was the first you. time teaching that. This butter. Very good. Very good. And so uh, it's as simple as that. He went through it in 30 minutes. Uh, we kind of started uh, teaching this about 7.20, and now it's 8 o'clock-ish. So yeah, went through really quick, and you cover everything. Uh, and they, these Bibles, uh, if you want to get these Bibles, you just type Church of Christ Star Bible 
and it's the third one down on Google. Third, third, uh, it'll say Star Bible. Uh, so you can keep them. Yes, I got a backpack full of them. So uh, and if you want to give an extra one to your hubby or to your sister uh, or your girlfriend. I, I already have one of those Bibles, so I think I'll stick with one for now, but thank you. Oh, sure thing. Okay, so good job, guys. Sorry? Fantastic. Yeah, sign your names, make them yours. 